So then we're going to go back to the book of Acts. Still remember we are still there? Yes. All right. We're going to look at a very, very important chapter. And this is my favorite chapter of the book of Acts. So it's going to be a lot, so we're not going to read the whole thing. We're going to read the beginning part. So we're going to have a two special Bible reader here to read for us. If you have a Bible, you can turn over there, chapter 17, verse 16 to 34. But we're going to just read up to 21st verse. Okay, All right? Come on. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, the spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him and some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seemed to be a preacher, but for divinities, because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Arab brothers, saying, may we know what this new teaching is that you are preaching. So for you, for you bring some strange things to our ears. You wish to know, therefore, what the, these things mean. Now all the things are for, and the foreigners who have lived and spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. Hey, thank you. <laughs> There's some intuitives to what to read, so I said, why don't you go see? Let's pray before we get into it. Lord, we thank you for your word. But every time we come to your word, may your spirit open up our mind, our heart, so we can know what it means. But also help us to live it out. So to help us, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's your favorite ice cream? You yeah, have many choices. Do you know what is my favorite ice cream flavor? No, because I... Okay. No, because I don't eat ice cream at all. <laughs> Too bad. Yes. No. <laughs> Choices is so popular in the modern days of life, right? We have so many choices in our life. You go into any store, you got tons of choices. We live in a pluralistic world. So many choices, so many ideas bombarding us. Buy me, buy me, listen to me, listen to me. So how do we make the decisions, especially related to our spiritual life? Which God we need to worship? Why we need to worship certain, certain things? The world is telling us, anyway, it's going to be the same. Have you ever defined supermarket? It's a goal to pick and choose, right? You can go anywhere, all oh, that's all the same, all the religions are the same, just make you be good. That's what we heard of. But is that true? You know, in long time ago, when King Henry the Eighth, he claimed himself is what? The defender of the faith. That's 2000, that's 1521. But turn the clock, turn the time much quicker. 2008, that's Prince Charles. He said, I'm a, I'm a defender of 
Okay, what's different? What's different between King Harry VIII and uh, Prince Charles? What's different? The first one is older. <laughs> <laughs> yes, much older. <laughs> much older. So what is different between King Harry VIII and the Prince Charles? What's different? No, 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 no. that's not what I mean about appearance. What's difference their claim? You see the difference? The old one is defender of the faith. The new one is defender of faith. What's different? No. Okay, what does that make it? What this small word make it so different? Huh? Choice. When King Henry is I'm the I'm defender of the faith, he is defending the Anglican Church, defending the Christian faith. But when the king, the, the priest charges that I am defender of faith, it means any faith. Okay? Not just the king of the Anglican Church. You see the difference now? We live in a pluralistic world. Even he, this tradition, supposed to defend for the king, the England, the the Anglican Church, but now he opened up the door for all kind of things. So that's the world we are living. And today, Paul's sermon in Athens it really show how we going to preach the gospel in this type of setting. We live in a pluralistic world. Everybody claim that he can believe in anything, except, oh, he claim you're the only way. And that's why usually Christianity got into the corner, corner because this type of thinking, Christ is the only way. It's not accepted in this world. And let's see how Paul started this world. And that's why we're going to dig into this pretty much I try, I try to get to this, this chapter, all right? So this is really my favorite chapter uh, because before, you know, the Peter preached in the synagogue, in all this, we said, oh, 3,000 believe in Jesus, 5,000 believe in Jesus, sounds great. But his audience, it's been the same. His audience, what is, what is Peter's audience? When Peter preached, who did he preach to? Most are Jewish. Most are Jewish. So they already know that's a God. Right? So what Peter did is easy. He just tried to point to Jesus as a Messiah. Because everybody in his audience, they are worshiping God. But now Paul is different. He got into the marketplace. Most people doesn't believe that's a God. Or believe there's so many gods. And how do we preach about that? Alright. So, we're going to start it with uh, verse 16. Now, while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw the city was full of idols. So, we started with open eyes and broken hearts. Open eyes and broken hearts. Now it's summertime. Many people travel. We travel to, we welcome people from San Francisco. Maybe some of you are going to travel to San Francisco, right? So when you go to the city, go into trouble, what do you see? What do you try to see? Huh? What do you try to see? Restaurant, food, right? All kinds of things you see. But uh, this Paul into Athens, that's not what he prepared. So he's not going to as a, as a tourist. The scripture here said, as he waiting, he still was provoked. Underline the word, provoke. Within him, as he saw the sea, full of what? Idols. Athens, when you think about Athens, what comes to your mind? Greek. Greek city, yes, but spe specific, Athens. What's famous for the Athens? What's Athens? Athens. Ah. You all see this picture, right? Every time we point to Athens, that's the picture. And why is that? 
That's a temple. The elephant's name actually actually is named by this goddess, Athena, right? So you can tell as a city, it's already started to remember the goddess. This is this is saying that the in the city of Athens, there are more people, more gods than people. More gods than people. Wow. That means the city is full of the idol indeed. And that provoke Paul's heart. <laughs> so what would make your heart stir up your heart? When we come to the cross of God, really first is what do you want to see? What's the heart condition? When you go into the city, you see all kind of bad things. You feel ah, it's okay. These people, that's okay. Or your heart will be stirred up by God, by Holy Spirit. Something is wrong. And I pray that will be a beginning point. And you travel, especially this summer. We go to Taiwan in July third. Going to be a three weeks. Yes, we're going to be sizing there. But we pray that we'll go out of there to also see what's wrong there. When we go in vacation, we go to places, we'll see what's wrong there. And we'll pray for the city. That's the first step. Remember Jesus, when he see the crowd in Matthew 9, 36, he said, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. That's the first step. We need, we need to see the world the sh like sheep without the shepherds. Just past week, the two celebrities, right? They have a fame, they have a money, but yet they chose to end their own life. Something is wrong here, right? We all like to be that type of person that's so famous, so successful, and can have a fancy apartment in, in, in Manhattan, and can travel all over the world, but yet they end their life. We need to have compassion on this world. People are like sheep without sheep. So that's the first thing. What do you see? What provoked your heart? May you really ask this question yourself. Every time you go to Times Square, what's this? What's promoting your heart? When you see the news, when you watch the new, really the, the newspaper, or if, if you do, what comes to your heart? Right? So that's first. Second, we need to know the world we live in. Right? See that? Verse 17. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devoted person and in the marketplace every day with the Lord's school happened to be there. This is key. We need to go from church to the marketplace. In a way, it's easy to, for us to talk about God, this is the church, right? But Paul now, he moved from the synagogue to the marketplace. And what's out there? First, that we see he encountered two major groups. The first group is called Epicurean. And this group, probably just like most of people like us, like no not like us, like in modern life here. They pursue the most sensual enjoyment, especially the derived from the fine food and drink. Ooh. That's why us, right? Most people. Basically, they don't believe in God, they just want to enjoy good life. Happiness, pleasure, that's what they're pursuing. And what the other group called the souls is pantheism, actually. The pantheism is the whole world, universe, is God. God is everywhere. And what they try to do is to have discipline in their, in their life. 
Pressure was not good. The pain was not evil. The most important thing in life was to follow what's reason and be self-sufficient, unmoved by inner feeling or outward outward circumstances. So this is the two major groups in the marketplace. Do you know that that's the idea behind everything we see, we read? What we see is material things, but things is behind it, right? So we didn't know what's behind all this. So this is two major things. And he summarized, actually, it's very easy. The experience you enjoy life. And the other group is what? Enjoy life. All right? If you want to see, this is two major groups. Enjoy life or endure life? Is there another option? And that's why we, as Christians, we need to present this in the marketplace. Right? And where is especially this marketplace called our, our real applicants? Have you heard about this term called Mars Hill? No. Actually, you Google around, there's so many places Mars Hill Church, Mars Hill School. And what is this place? This place is the agent's kind of city hall. They are poor. Any new idea coming to the city, they need to be called up to present it there. And that's what Paul did. They invited Paul to kind of say, check it out. Oh, what can you bring into our city? All right. In a way, it kind of open, but in a way also they want to see. They want to check it out. What's this? So, just bring out another world of us a Christian. Especially many of seniors is going to college. And many the college graduates, they go into the marketplace. Our faith must be extended out from the church. My, as a pastor, my job is to equip you to know how to defend, live out the Christian faith. Here it's easy, right? We think about for the for soldier, the real Praise belongs to soldiers, it's not training camp. It's where? Battlefield. The soldier cannot always say, I, I want to learn all kinds of skills in the training camp. I want to learn how to use all the weapons. But we don't want to go out. We don't afraid to go out. All this training, all this worship we do is for us to go out. So we need to become apologetics. It's not saying sorry. Today is a lot of Greek term, okay? Apologetics means that you defend, but defense of vindicate of what we believe. We apologize. Yeah. We want to defend our what we believe. Do you know what you believe? If you know, and how do you defend that? I love this quote. It says, the purpose of, of, of apologetics is said, to mold the thought of the world in such a way as to make the acceptance of Christianity something more than a logical uh, security. So bring the Christian faith to marketplace and help people to understand it. But in such a way, it's not by shouting, arguing. 1 Peter 3.15, let's read this together. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make defense to anyone who asks you for a reason, for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with what? Gentleness and respect. With gentleness and respect. I, it can win the argument, but it may create a new enemy. I, so that's not what we need to do. We want to win the argument, but also we will do in the soul. That's the purpose of apologetics. All right. Now is this just a setting the background? We're going to dig into the sermon. Well, do we still have time? We want to dig into the sermon. All right. So if you have a Bible, you continue. We look at verse twenty-two. This is Paul's sermon, and this very very important sermon. And so today I'm going to preach Paul's sermon, basically, right? So Paul was standing in the midst of our octopus, saying, Men of Athens, I perceive that in any way you are very religious. Okay? 
this is the opening statement. Remember, he's not preaching at the church. Okay? He is preaching at the marketplace. Right? So he said, You are all very religious. He established a common ground. The opening is very important, right? We're not going to all oh, your sin are going to hell. This is the marketplace. People don't know God. Right? So we need to establish a common ground. I hope today there's some principle you also can use in your workplace. You can use so I hope you can take some notes if you you can use it in, in the class classroom. When you want to talk to your friend, your co-workers about the religious, how you started. You see, Paul here there's a he make a connection. He make an observation first. And he said, You are very religious. Indeed, everybody's seeking. Everybody wants to know something about me of life, right? And then he I second, he identified the object of worship. For as I pass along and observe the object of your worship, I found also an altar with an inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as a known that I proclaim to you. So he tried to answer what people are seeking. I proclaim to you what is the true meaning of the worship. I saw you have a worship, you idol here, you have an object here. Let me tell you what's the meaning. So, making a connection. Before I joined this, a uh, long time ago, I joined this evangelistic team called EE. They call it, it, it uh, how does it work? Evangel Explosion, right? So every week, we need to go visit people's home and to share the gospel. And always, the most difficult thing is how do you connect to the spiritual topic, right? Do you have this experience? You want to talk to a friend you know, about my sport, talk about all this uh, uh, hobby, whatever. Well, how are you going to turn the subject into the meaning for this? I was amazed, you know, how American culture, the two strangers, they can talk whole night about sports. And it looks like they are very, very good friends, right? But afterward, I checked out once I saw this. The two persons that talk, wow, oh, hold on. And I said, Do you know him? I said, No. <laughs> this first time was <laughs> But I can talk about whole night about sport. But does that mean any meaning to most of them? No. And too often that's our conversations about. We don't talk about all this visual thing. Whole night. But when you go back, what? There's no meaning. So I hope we pray that when we have a conversation, we really have intention. We want to bring people to know God. So you need to make observation, you need to make connection, and then Holy Spirit will guide you into the topic. Alright? Okay, now you got into the topic. What do you talk about? What do you talk about? You, when you grew up in the church, usually we will say what? Jesus loves you, right? You go right in. When you want to share the gospel, what do you share? How do you share? Jesus loves you. Yes, that's right. But people don't know who cares, who is Jesus. When Peter or when Paul preached at the synagogue, he can just go right in to Jesus because people know God. But here now, Paul in the marketplace, people don't know about Jesus, don't know about anything. So you need to start it. You need to start it with God. You need to start it with God. Alright. So he started with A, the greatness of God. Look at the verse 24. The God who made the world and everything in being Lord of heaven and earth does not live in temple made by man, nor he served by the human hand as though he is needed anything. He made a connection with, with the temple. And that's why doctrine of God is so important. And Wednesday night, we are studying the theology. Now we are studying the doctrine of God. And exactly, Paul here is using that. Right? So I encourage you, okay, Wednesday night, you have time, 8 o'clock, we, we meet in the daily hall. And for those of you attending now, you see how Paul used it. First, this is about what? The great is special about God's what? Creation. 
Right? It's about God is what? Create in the heaven and earth. Creation. So you know God created the heaven and earth. Second, the goodness of God. Since he himself went to all mankind like a breath and empty. God give us goodness. God give us life. That's the second point. God create, God give us life. Number three, the providence. We just talked about it on Wednesday. The providence of God. And He made from one man every nation to mankind to live on the face of the earth, having determined a lot of periods and boundary of their dwelling place. God not just up there. God here among us, care for us every day. You may not experience it, you may not know, but God is doing that to us. Matter of fact, you can sit here, it's God's providence, right? So when we share the gospel, we need to start it from God. He's a creator, He's a provider, He cares for us. And what does this mean? The fourth purpose of God. Verse 27. That he should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him, yet he's actually not far from each other of us. <laughs> All these creations, God wants to remind us, point us to God. Remember, heaven declared the glory of God, right? When we see beautiful sky, God wants us to remember God. When you see something so great, you want to see, oh, who are your parents? Right? I hope it's the same thing. If you see someone so great, we, we will have some good testimony. Hope you say, who's your God? So the purpose of God is for us to, to seek Him, to see God. <coughs> That's how it started. But not always there. We always need to bring people to make their choice. Make their choice. The time of ignorance God overlooked, but now He commands all people everywhere to repent. Because He has fixed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom He has appointed and of His has given assurance to all by raising Him from the dead. Now he brings that into the gospel and asks people to make the decision. We not only point out the problem of the world, we want to give them a solution, but we also need to let people know the serious and consequence of the world, but also show them the grace of God. You see that he talked about the resurrection. A couple of weeks ago, or two weeks ago, uh, quite a few from the Chinese side, we went to this mental health first aid seminar. It's hosted by the state government. In a way, that's very helpful that the city government see the needs of the mental health. So for mental health, actually, it's not really mental health. There's always a reason, right? The point of this past week, these two celebrities that commit suicide. So right away, Governor Cuomo said they're going to, he's going to put in $3.5 million to do something to prevent this. Yes, we thank you for government sees that. But this is not mental health. You look at any case. What caused that? What caused that? Relationship. Family. You see, that's why the family is so important. When you look into every this so-called mental health breakdown, whatever, because most of the case, that's family issue. And may God help us to see God's desire, intention is through family to nurture, to care for us. And when that's been taken away. 
There's no drug, no other thing can prove that, can help you on that. Yes, we need to reach out to help those people has the problem. Well, only gospel, only gospel can bring people, can solve the problem. And that's why we, we are in best position for that. The people are hurting. Do you provoke when you see the news? We are so sad. Although those two persons, I don't know them before at all. Maybe someone you carry the bag, or maybe you watch the, the TV of the, the chef. But most of it doesn't matter how rich you are. doesn't matter how poor you are. We all need gospel. And we all need love and healing for the family. When the family broke, it really caused so much problem. And that's why God, that's what He promote me. Whenever I see the brokenness of family, when I see the problem, I really, I really hope I can... I really thinking sometimes I want to have an orphanage or something. I just keep all this trouble kids with me. Really, I sometimes say, if I can do it, I can fix it, okay? Because I know when they go home, they're going to have all these problems. When they go to school, they're going to face all these problems. And every little kid so cute when they grow up like that. What happened? Where are the mom and dad? Look at the baby. Everyone born so cute. But what happened when they grow up? Really, somehow, when they take care of this baby, this, this, this boy home. Why they cannot behave? Why are they sitting here? They need to make all the trouble. Why don't want to teach them? Where are the mom and dad? Really? I sometimes I really, of course, I, I, I need to ask for my wife's permission. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, especially I'm going to take them from Honduras. I really, I wish, why all those kids, they can, can spark it, can, can, we, there's no AC, we go into a small church, and all these little kids just all sit there nicely. All nicely. Literally, nobody uh, 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 do all these things. Where do you learn this from? Why do you put this still? I honestly, I don't know why. Is the ADHD only here not in Honduras? There must be some something wrong. So who we need to stop the drink? And there's no drinking water there. They all drink water from the well. So they give us bottle of water for us to brush the teeth, wash the face. They said, you don't want to do all these things. But I can sit still. Give me a sit still boy. Come on. I'm looking for that. Next we want to come my service. I was wondering that's why we need to separate the kids, right? Long time ago they just all sit with family. So next week, okay, boys and girls, if you could. Alright, sit with a parent. I want to hear a parent. Next week is combined worship with Father's Day. Right? Well, yeah, I did put it. It's Father's Day. Sit with the parents. Okay? And sit still, sit nicely. Alright? I'm going to preach. And I really hope, I really hope people coming to the church and they will see. Oh, what happened to this kid? They can sit still. Wow, it must be for Mars. <laughs> because anyone can sit still, they thought it's normal. But I'm going to fight. That's what I'm going to fight. That's what provoked me. Alright. And it really couldn't, I really, I hope, maybe could still, I hope, I'm going to open those orphanage, just all come over. I sleep with it every day, I fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> just, just out of my notes, but. <laughs> May God help us to see the problem, to see the problem, God provoke us. Don't just talk about all, oh, just like this philosopher. They just go to the market, talk about something, listen, and say bye bye. Maybe we have to make some serious conversation and make a choice. And what is your response? What is your response? Every Sunday you come here, what do you bring back? You need to make a response. This couple of response. Now when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. 
But, yes, some will mock our message. But this other, but others said, we will hear you again about this. So Paul went out from their midst. Oh, can okay, we want to hear? Sounds interesting. Right? But how you are the, the third choice. But some men joined him and believed among whom also were the anonymous and oh, all these fruits. This, the search of some believe. So which group are you in? You gonna mark the message? Oh, you just say, okay, interesting. Oh, oh, I learned something. Or you actually want to believe. And I pray they believe. And the word of God will transform us. We, I pray that we have a more apologetics. The very first one who died, we call Justin Martyr. Justin Bruce. <laughs> Justin Martyr. He was 80, 150. He's very, very famous, actually very intellectual person. And he wrote, he wrote, we call him the first apology, right? And he wrote his apology first to who? Do you know who he wrote it to? He wrote it. He wrote it to Roman and Wow. He wanted to defend for Christianity. Why Roman persecute us? Not only that, you shouldn't persecute us, you should convert to us. How dare you are to write this to Roman Emperor? But I pray. You're going to go to school. You're going to very good school. Maybe God will ask you that you can write something in the marketplace to give glory to God, to defend Him. God give you those good position. It's not for you just to enjoy the pain of life, but for you to speak for Him. So may God help us. What choice are you going to make? Are you mocking? And just listen, or you want to believe? And for those who believe, would, would you dare, like Paul, to stand up at the marketplace at Mars Hill and speak up for God? So I hope pray that, that you go back to read this chapter 17 again, to see this sermon again, and dig into it. Paul see all this problem he provoked. And I hope God will provoke your heart today also. What went wrong in your life? What went wrong in society? How many as a Christian can bring the good news into the world? And God still has power to save. Maybe we should all stand up.
can bring the hope into the marketplace. We can share the good news. Let the people have no hope. They can find true meaning of life. Let's pray for them. Pray for yourself that how the Lord he can be used by God to share his good news. Come on. 